Today we'll be talking about mononucleosis. What is mononucleosis? Mononucleosis is a clinical presentation that includes pharyngitis with exudates, posterior cervical lymphadenopathy, fever, and a fatigue. What is the cause of mononucleosis? 90% of mononucleosis is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. The other 10% is caused by cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex 1 and 2, and human herpes virus 1. Could you talk about the early phase of infection? Sure. The Epstein-Barr virus is spread by kissing. Once the person is infected, the virus begins to multiply in the oropharynx over a six-week period. This is called the incubation period. The incubation is followed by a prodrome of about two weeks. At this time, the virus has invaded the blood. So, what is the progression after the prodrome period? After the prodrome period of about two weeks, full-blown illness becomes apparent with the manifestation of fever, sore throat, enlarged lymph nodes, fatigue, and body aches. During the acute illness, which antibody and cells have emerged? In addition to the high viral load that is present in the person's blood, IgM will be produced against the Epstein-Barr virus capsid antigen. In addition, CD8 T lymphocytes are directed against the Epstein-Barr infected B cells. Don't forget that the Epstein-Barr virus have already invaded the B lymphocytes. It seems as if bacterial pharyngitis and infectious mononucleosis present very similar. How would you distinguish between the two? The monospot test is performed. It is a blood test to determine the presence of the heterophil antibodies. The clinical picture plus a positive heterophil test is good enough to make the diagnosis. But you should be aware that the heterophil antibodies are not specific and may even be negative and unreliable, especially in children because they take a while to develop. If exchange of saliva through kissing is the primary way to transmit the virus, how do children contract the disease? It is quite possible that asymptomatic parents shed the virus sufficiently enough to inoculate their children. I have few more questions. Firstly, what are the two most common clinical presentations of acute mononucleosis? And secondly, what complications are associated with mononucleosis? The most common clinical presentations are sore throat, which is present around 95%, and cervical lymphadenopathy, which is present in around 80%. Complications of this include splenomegaly, which occurs 50 to 60% of the time, hepatitis, myocarditis, upper airway obstruction, encephalitis, and hemolytic anemia. What is the current treatment for acute mononucleosis? Presently, there is no approved treatment and there is no vaccine. Basically, the fever and the body aches may be symptomatically treated 
with acetaminophen or ibuprofen. What about physically active young people who contract acute mononucleosis? It is recommended that these persons avoid contact sports for about six weeks because of the possibility of splenic rupture, especially in the first three weeks. Dear McCulloch, would you like to summarize mononucleosis for the students? Sure. I will itemize it for you. Number one, it presents with sore throat, posterior cervical lymphadenopathy, fever, and fatigue. Number two, it is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. Number three, the virus invades healthy B lymphocytes, resulting in atypical B lymphocytes. Number four, it is transmitted mainly through saliva and a kissing. Number five, the etherophil antibodies may be helpful in making the diagnosis in adults, but can be unreliable in children. Number six, antibiotics are not indicated and there are no vaccines available. Number seven, it is a self-limited disease and acetaminophen may be used to treat symptoms. Number eight, parents who are asymptomatic carriers may inoculate their children by kissing them on the lips. Number nine, persons who have been infected should avoid contact sports and heavy lifting due to the risk of splenic rupture. And number 10, complications include splenomegaly, URI with possible airway obstruction, myocarditis, hepatitis, encephalitis, and hemolytic anemia. I do hope this review met your needs and has given you a sense of preparedness for the upcoming examination. I wish you well. Good night.